Hi guys! I was just about to start working on a couple of Traveller's Notebook pages and I thought I would show you how I use the digital form of these Project Life cards to create Traveller's Notebook sized Project Life cards. It's super easy, all you need is Photoshop and I will show you how I do it. So I've started by opening a new canvas in Photoshop, which is eight and a quarter by four and a quarter, which is a traveler's notebook size. You can make this as big or as small as you need it to be to fit whatever project you want to do. So the first thing to do when you want to resize project life cards for a traveler's notebook is open the PDF with the um, actual project life cards in it. Now there's a trick to this, when I go open in Photoshop, it's going to bring up an import PDF box, which is the PDF we want to import. If I import it exactly as it is, then those cards are going to be exactly the right size for Project Life cards. What I need to do is I need to get this PDF to import into Photoshop larger than a Project Life size card. So I am just going to uh, take a random guess. I think the reality is, is I probably want it more than twice as large. So I'm just going to change one of these image sizes. It's constrained here. You can see by the little um, lock icon. So I'm going to make this 20 inches high and open it. Now we are increasing the file size considerably. So that can take some time. Patience is essential. Once it's open, we can just go ahead and I'm going to use the marquee tool to select the card that I want to change the size of. So I'm just dragging that out to fit the card. Then I'm going to go edit and copy. Go back to my new page and paste this on here. So you can see when I zoom out, it is much larger than the Traveller's Notebook size, which means we don't lose any of the definition of the print. I'm going to use Command T or Transform to scale this down so that it then uh, fits inside my page here and hit return. So this is now a project life size card that is now going to fit a traveler's notebook. So you can see because the dimensions are different, I've got a bit of white space up the top here that I need to change. So I am going to get my paint bucket tool hit option or alt and just pick this peachy color here and fill it in. When you zoom in close like this you can see the difference though the actual project life card design here has this lovely texture on it whereas my paint bucket piece at the top does not it's just one plain color. So I'm going to use the clone stamp tool to clone the pattern that's down here onto the top. This can take a little bit of time, but it is totally worth it. Hold down your option key and click down onto the patterned piece. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, you hopefully you can see that my brush tool at the top here now has that pattern in it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run my brush across and that will copy that pattern. And I just need to keep pressing Alt and going down, back down into the pattern piece every so often until I get all the way to the top. And now when you zoom in, you can see there's no discernible difference between the um, actual Project Life card and the piece at the top that we've created. And then all you need to do is go ahead and print that. Sometimes you don't need to get that complicated. You can just alter the size of the card to fit a Traveller's Notebook. For this one, for instance, I'm just going to, again, use my marquee tool to copy out the card. Hit copy and then go back to my canvas so I can turn off the first one we've done and hit paste. So you can see that this is too big for the page. Again, I'm going to transform and then just resize it so that it's the right height for my Traveller's Notebook page. And then you can go ahead and experiment with moving these across um, to fit until you like how it looks and then go ahead and print from there. It's not going to be exactly the same as the Project Life card, but you get the same design. I'll show you a couple more examples of this.
just a flat out copy and paste and then moving this here. So let me show you what would happen if you didn't increase the size of the PDF when you opened it. If I go to open again, and if I open this PDF, I'll just rename it so it will open it, if I open it exactly the right size that it is, So this has opened and we will go ahead and use the marquee tool to copy the card and paste it onto my canvas so you can see how much smaller it is. So if I then use the transform tool to grow this project life card to fit a traveler's notebook page, you can see how it looks all fuzzy around the edges. So if I put my original one see how much sharper it is when you increase the size so that's why it's important to take that extra step to increase the size of the PDF before you start adding um, and adjusting your pages for cards like this with lines it's so easy to adjust them for a traveler's notebook page I just copy and paste again use my transform tool to adjust it so it is the right size for the page. I'm going to shift this one to the top and I want to add some additional lines. So I'm going to use my marquee tool to copy this side of the page, of the page sorry. So copy and paste and then you can see I've got an extra set of lines that I can then move down. Then all you have to do is print out the ones that you want to use and start embellishing. Another way to use the digital elements from the Citrus Twist Shop um, to create Traveler's Notebook spreads is to create stickers from the Cut Apart sheet. Again, super easy using your Silhouette Software Studio. So let me show you how I created this sticker sheet as well. Okay, so here is how simple it is to turn a cut apart sheet into a set of stickers using your Silhouette Studio software. So the first thing you have to do is find your printable. This is a PDF, which um, I've just got the basic version of Silhouette Studio. Um, it won't import into there, so I need to create a JPEG first. So I just double click that and open that up in Acrobat and go to File, Save As, and I want to save it as a JPEG. Now the only trick with this is to make sure that your settings are set to maximum quality. You want the JPEG to be as um, high a quality as you can, um, otherwise it won't trace or print very well in Silhouette. And just save that. And then I can go ahead and drag that JPEG into the Silhouette Studio software. And so the easiest way that I find to do this is to um, use the trace tool, select the trace area and trace over the printable. Now, not all of these are gonna trace particularly well, so you just need to play with your settings um, until you find the, the best for the printable that you're using. Um, I like to adjust the threshold and potentially it's gonna go all the way up and then go down in little increments from there. And it is really hard to see at this sort of size. So I do tend to zoom in a little bit so I can see that this is getting um, most of the imagery there. In which case I can go trace outer edge. So you don't want to trace, you want to trace the outer edge because we're only, um, only intending to trace the outside of each sticker. So once that's done, you can go ahead and select the um, now cut file that you've created um, I right click that and go release compound path because there are some in here that aren't going to work well as stickers so we just need to do a little bit of tidying up and I have zoomed in on the right area up here so you can see that um, there are several cut files for these few so I just go ahead and select over there make sure you deselect your JPEG and then hit delete and the easiest way to create these outlines is just to use those shape tools 
to create the right sized rectangle to go over these printable pieces. So I will go ahead and finish up these ones. And then just go through your file and make sure that everything is the way it should be. Ones like this that have lines in it, again, you'll need to select those cut lines, delete them, and then go ahead and create a new outline for these. Now some shapes are going to be slightly more complicated like this little bird one here that's selected a whole bunch of different little shapes in there. So again I'm just going to select all of these and I'm just holding down shift to deselect the ones that I don't want and then I can delete it. So for a more complicated shape like this I just go ahead and use the draw a polygon tool and just line up your points on each of the corners of the shape. So that is my sheet of stickers done. So I'm just going to zoom back out here for you. So what I want to do now is just to make it easier, I'm going to select all of those going to deselect the JPEG and then group them all together. Now you've got a few options for stickers. You can create a sticker with a white border around the outside. You can cut this exactly as it is now. Um, but one thing I like to do is to use the internal offset tool just to bring those cut lines in just a tiny bit from the edge to make sure that when it's cutting, it's going to cut into color so you don't have any little white borders around the outside. Um, obviously, this is much too big. Let me zoom in so you can see here. So you can see it's made um, a, a fairly hefty internal offset there. So I can delete that and try again. So I'm going to select my cut file here and again go to internal offset and I want something like 0 10 with sharp corners. And it's bordered in just, just a tiny bit so it's maybe not quite enough. I might go up just a tiny bit more. So yeah. You really just have to play around depending on the cut file that you have um, to see how much space you need um, in your the actual printable. So I think that 015 looks good for this, so I'm going to go ahead and apply it. And while I've got all those selected, I'm going to group them all together as well. Now I've actually got two cut file outlines here, so I'm going to carefully select the outside one and delete that and you can see there's a little bit of printed edge on the outside of all of those cut files. Zoom back out again, the last thing you need to do is group both your JPEG and the cut files together and then we're going to set up the page for printing. So I need to add some registration marks, just going to leave those as standard there and then spin my file around to fit. Now obviously this is a letter size printable, but because you cannot print outside this area here, it's gonna need to be scaled down. So I just scale it down until it's inside those print borders. And it doesn't have to be, um, it's, not, it's not a terrible amount of scaling. It looks probably more dramatic than it is. But I just scale it down until everything is within the allowable borders and then I can go ahead and print this file. So my first step is just to send this to my printer. So now that that is all printed out, I have stuck my printed um, sheet of sticker paper onto my silhouette mat and we can go ahead and send that to the machine. Now I need to make sure that it is on sticker paper. So you can choose to um, just put sticker paper in here. This is the Silhouette brand. These settings work for that. So 
um, you can you do that. And what that will do is actually cut out the little stickers into individual stickers. So um, what I want to do is kiss cut these stickers so that they stay on the backing sheet. I already have a custom setting for that. So I am going to do this here. I suggest that um, with your own machine and your own sticker paper that you do a few test cuts to make sure that you've got the right settings. But mine is on blade one speed 2 and force 10 and then go ahead and send that to the silhouette and so here we are I've got all my digital elements printed out and I can go ahead and put this page together as quick as you like so I've got my two travelers notebook sized pages and I've just hole punched them so that they can go into my clear travelers notebook covers I've got my stickers here and all I'm gonna do is I just stuck my photo down onto um, that was one of the digital cards that I didn't resize I've just printed it out at the same project life size as normal and then I'm just layering some stickers up the top right here to create a little cluster now this is what I meant by kiss cut stickers is that they're all on one sheet like that and you can just peel them off I um, do find that it's easier if you cut the stickers after you let the printing dry a little bit because you're using um, an inkjet printer if you're using a laser printer it won't be a problem at all but an inkjet printer does of course make the um, paper quite wet so it does pay to leave the paper the sticker paper to dry just a little bit before you send it through your silhouette machine I'm adding a tiny bit of journaling and I'm going to stick a date on here and then call this page done. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, well done you. I hope you learned some new tips and tricks for using a digital elements to easily create pages in your traveler's notebook. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you've got any other questions, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try and answer them for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and if you want to keep watching, there's a couple more videos on screen. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye guys!